And we're recording. Hey, Kimberly, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well, um, considering it's a beautiful Wednesday here in New York City, and we're both indoors. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thanks very much for doing this. I, I really appreciate you agreeing to, to the interview and to be part of the channel. Uh, this is going to be a, a kind of a unique topic for people. I don't think they, when they tune into this channel, I don't think they're going to expect the topic we're going to talk about, but I'll, I'll save that piece for your introduction. Um, first, I want to thank everybody who's tuning in, whether you're a new viewer or returning viewer, this is, did you know that question mark, a uh, channel where I get to talk to interesting people about interesting and sometimes annoying topics. And usually people come away with uh, new insights or things that they did not know before they actually tuned into the conversation. If you like any of the previous chats or this chat and you want to be notified of future episodes, be sure to hit the subscribe button with the bell. And for those of you who don't know, my name is Sean O'Rourke. And when I'm not interviewing interesting people, I'm a cyber liability consultant for a company called Combs and Company. And Kimberly, why don't you tell the fine folks what you do? Awesome, definitely. Um, hello, thank you for having me on your show. Uh, so I come from Baruch College and I run the Executives on Campus Mentoring Program, uh, which really connects students with professionals in various industries and fields. Uh, prior to Baruch College, actually, my background has always been in working with CUNY, um, specifically though in the career counseling aspect. So I've worked a lot with students, both one-on-one -on -one and also in groups, helping them with resume writing, interviewing skills, networking, um, just overall how to prepare for the job search. Um, and on the side, when I'm not working at Baruch, I also actually teach at Hunter College in their counseling program, part-time as an adjunct. Um, I actually teach in their multicultural uh, counseling class. So I teach students about how to be aware of different cultures, different um, social aspects when they are working in the profession. Well, very nice. Well, I just learned my first new thing of uh, this conversation. I did not know you were an adjunct professor. I only know you from running around various uh, EOC uh, events and seeing you hustling from here to there to make sure everything's going according to plan. Uh, yes. So it's actually nice to, actually, to sit down and get about 30 to 40 minutes of your time undivided. Uh, I was actually thinking that today. I'm like, I think this is the first time Sean and I actually get to have a conversation. <laughs> it, it is, without a doubt. Um, and just for those who may not be familiar, CUNY stands for what? The City University of New York. Okay. So besides go. Baruch College, there are other there are 19 other colleges that make up the CUNY system. That's right, and it's only for New York City. So because um, there is SUNY, which is the State University of New York, um, and so you and I met through Executives on Campus, uh, which is why I have you on here because I find this program. I've been a part of this program now for seven eight years. Um, and it's a school year long program where you pair up volunteer mentors like myself with students, both undergrad and uh, graduate students who are looking for mentors to help them sort of gauge what they should study, what jobs they should apply for, uh, interview tips, so on and so forth. And I find that it's one of the few programs of this nature that I've ever found anywhere. Because I know my alma mater doesn't do it, and I've talked to people there who think it's a great idea, and then it goes nowhere. So can you give some folks some background on the program and what its uh, goals are? Yeah, sure. Uh, so Executives on Campus has actually been around for now 20 years. Uh, it was started in 2000 by actually three classmates uh, from the class of 55 uh, from Baruch College. And after they graduated from Baruch, you know, they got together and they really started talking like we just overall enjoyed our time at Baruch, but we feel like there was something still missing in our experience there. And when they got together and talking about what was missing in their college experience, it was actually having a mentor. And what they really specifically meant was that what was missing was they wish they had somebody who really taught them how to transfer all of that 
academic knowledge to the outside world and also how to prepare their soft skills because no one teaches you that right what do you, how do you work with a professional or how do you network with your new colleagues so um, they got together created this program um, it originally was going to pilot with only 10 students 10 mentors um, now 20 years later we've exploded we now have over 600 active mentors and it's not just a year-long program um, we also do short -term mentoring opportunities as well um, and then every year we serve about 1200 students so it grows more and more each year um, students are talking about it students are actually now at the point where they find it to be very competitive um, and then mentors really just overall enjoy their experience um, like you said they've found that there's been no other program like this um, it's not just that it runs well it's very organized but they've also found that at the end of the program, they really made a friend more than just helping a mentee. So there are so many positives that come out of this that it gets them coming back for another year, but also they end up referring their friends or their colleagues. So um, this year is another big cohort that we just matched. We have, um, I would say about 285 students this year in the year-long program. And we saw a surge in the number of year-long mentors who signed up. We are at 260. And this is the first time we're going virtual too. So it sure. just goes to show you how, even though we're in this very virtual world now, just how impactful mentorship can be still. Yeah, my latest mentee uh, actually lives in the Bronx, mm -hmm. but he's going to go stay with his brother in Florida for a couple months because all his classes are virtual. He's got no lab classes, no in-person commitments. So he figured, why not do the winter from the sun and sand of, uh, of Florida? Uh, but we're going to try to actually meet up in person before he takes off, if we can, if we can make that happen. Very nice. Excellent. So uh, this is, so you, just the summary of it, raised a, a number of questions that I didn't even have marked down. Uh, but the first one is, is that, the students look at it as competitive. So the students, how do the students get involved in this? And, and does every student who expresses interest get into the program? Um, so the academic year long program that we have, that is actually very specific in terms of we have specific requirements. Um, the students who typically participate do have to be undergraduate juniors or first year grad students. Um, we do sometimes take seniors or sophomores, but very limited. Um, so how they hear about the program is uh, usually word of mouth. Um, so they've had friends who participated in it before. Um, sometimes we actually get students who reapply and they want, oh, I've had a great year last year. Can I get a second opportunity to have a mentor? Um, and also we do a lot of email blasts, um, whether it's through the school emails directly, but also a lot of them are involved in clubs and on-campus uh, programs. So we have a lot of the clubs also do our promotion as well. Um, and in terms of just hearing about it as well, the other last piece is they also hear sometimes from their professors. We work a lot with faculty um, and just trying to have their buy-in of the program and trying to see, like, tell them about this program. And usually what happens is in their class, they tell their students about it. Nice. So I, I know this, the, the way you try to match mentees to the mentors who are in industries or previously industries that, that interest them. So not every, so how do the mentees get matched up? Do they get to pick their mentor or is it sort of uh, a raffle uh, or um, a lottery, I should say, not a raffle, a lottery in mm -hmm. terms of if, if somebody wants, uh, if a couple of people want Kimberly as a mentor, then they get put in a hat and the first one to get pulled out, they're, they're the ones who are matched up. Mm -hmm. So the application process for students is a two-step process, uh, with the first part just being a general application um, and also having to respond to a couple of essay questions. And then the second portion is actually, yes, so once the student has fulfilled all of the steps of part one, then they go into step two where they receive an email from me and we do ask them to self-select. So they go through a document that has all the mentors who are participating in the year long program. They typically give me their top 10 choices. Um, we do tell them in advance that they, it is not guaranteed, um, but we allow them to kind of self-select just because one, it gives, I actually do all the matching internally manually. So okay. it does give me a sense of kind of where the student is at and also, you know, 
after a while, when I see all the names, there's a theme. So in terms of whether it's a specific industry or, you know, maybe the student is probably picking these individuals for their educational background. So I start to pick up too. Um, not everyone gets matched with who they selected. And in the sense when they don't, what I end up doing is I still look at what their career goals are. What are their career interests? So it's not a complete opposite. Um, and so they still usually in the end of the day, it, it works out well. Okay, and you do this all manually. So you're going through 200 plus students and mentors and sort of saying, okay, there's a love connection, there's a love connection and, and whatnot. That's, um, I wouldn't say that that's an easy job. It kind of sounds arduous to me. Yeah, you don't know how much uh, I have to look at Excel during yeah. that week on a matching. Um, you know, it is a lengthy process and, you know, we've gotten a lot of feedback like, oh, why don't you find an, an app or a software that will just be like a click and kind of like a dating app and it'll just match sure. everybody. But, you know, I think that's also what makes our program unique and also what makes it actually work because we do all the manual matching so although yes i am sitting there reading 200 plus essays and resumes um at the end of the day i feel like i get to know my students and my mentors better so you know for example when you apply sean i get to know what your background is where you worked your school and you know when i start to read the students essay i know exactly the type of person that would work well with you what kind of personality or, you know, same thing like, yeah, where they grew up or what are they sure. looking to possibly pursue as a profession? So, you know, it gets crazy during that time period when I'm matching. But like I said, at the end of the day, it's, I actually love reading all of the essays. It's just mind boggling just how diverse our student body is, as well as our mentor community. Well, and we'll talk about that, the diversity of Brooke, because obviously Brooke being in New York City, one, makes it an attractive place for foreign exchange students, but it's also the nature of CUNY uh, itself on how it promotes itself uh, to the diverse cultures and uh, uh, people of different origins, countries of origins here in the city. But let's stick to the process. So on the mentor side, I didn't go to Baruch. I have no affiliation uh, with Baruch whatsoever until the executive on-campus program, and I was introduced to that by my dad, who has no affiliation with Baruch, and he was introduced to it by somebody who did graduate from Baruch and was part of the executive on-campus. Give me a sense, and I mean, I'm not asking for absolute numbers unless you know them off the top of your head. How many of the mentors that you have are graduates of Baruch or at least have some connection with Baruch, and how many are folks like uh, myself and my dad who have nothing, uh, but just thought the program sounded great. Um, so I actually do have those numbers. Oh, okay, <laughs> cool. So we have data. To um, so I, we try to really update it and keep it up to date. So we're at 60% now of mentors who are Baruch graduates, and then 30% oh, wow. okay. who are um, not affiliated with Baruch in terms of their educational background. So yes, they usually come refer to us through other mentors. Um, some of them actually are also recruiters for Baruch. So they've gotten to know our Baruch students, they know about Baruch, and so at the end of the day, they're like, oh, well, I'm going to come back and mentor because um, I love Baruch that much. So it's, it's very diverse. Well, that speaks highly for Baruch then. One, that you get such a large population coming back to help the students yeah. at Baruch speaks well to the, to the experiences they have. Two, that you have people who are actually trying to recruit the students and they're like, well, I'm already going to do it. So why not yeah. just take an extra step and, and work with uh, a couple of the students that are, that are here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, and I think that's um, one of the benefits also of the program, although the goal of our program is not for students to ask for an internship or gain an internship. At the end of the day, it's kind of a win-win situation because the students are learning from this program, from their mentors, but at the same time, mentors, when they have internships available or whether it's a full-time opportunity, they've already gotten to know the students. And so we've had, had students who worked with their mentors and gotten a job or internship through this mm -hmm. program. Yeah, I know that um, I've, I've never had an intern work at either of the companies I've been a part of since at uh, Baruch, but um, I have helped a number of them sort of through the interview process for internships or jobs, depending if I had a graduate student and, and their resume writing and what have you. 
what kind of feedback do you get from the mentors as to their ex usual experiences with their mentees throughout the, uh, the school year? Mm -hmm. Um, we had really positive feedback, I and mean, one of them is that they they love working with the students just because these students are motivated. They they really are eager to learn. Um, they come prepared. They ask questions, um, and they really see them actually take the knowledge or the the advice that they get from their mentors, and they see their students actually using that and putting it into play. And like I said earlier, I think the final thing is what I hear from mentors all the time is that. I made a new friend and I hear so much of mentors telling me like, I'm still in touch with my mentee from two years oh, ago. I yeah. I hear stories where mentors are going to their student, their former mentees wedding or baby showers. And so, you know, overall it's a positive experience for them. And that's, I only get positive feedback. Well, it's another reason why I'm annoyed with COVID is because I was supposed to go to one of my, uh, very original mentee's uh, mm -hmm. wedding, mm -hmm. and but he's he's had to obviously limited it to just the immediate families and mm -hmm. what have you. And so he says well, we'll have a reception next year when when things free up. But we we don't want to wait to get married. Uh, so they're going to get married, I think this week actually. Oh, wow. um, and this week, to yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I watched him grow up. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, let's let's go back and touch on the diversity of the students mm -hmm. at Baruch because yep. I'll be honest with you, uh, that's one of the, the things that really attracts me year after year is that I usually end up getting a foreign exchange student. Um, I, this year, I don't. This year is one of the, I think only the second or third time that mm -hmm. I don't have a foreign exchange student, which is going to be unique. I'm, I'm going to have to readjust my thinking and my, my speeches and whatnot. Um, but how many, uh, I know Baruch's got a huge foreign exchange population. Do they seek out the program uh, itself? And how many of the participants, if you know, again, um, are foreign exchange students? Um, yeah, so uh, probably I would say in the last two to three years, I've seen an increase of international foreign students um, in, enrolled in our program and applying. Uh, typically more grad students than undergraduates, um, and I think because the grad programs, they're two years, so, you know, there's more of that kind of rush to, I need to network, I need to meet professionals sure. so I can gain some experience. Um, I don't have the exact numbers in terms of the overall um, enrollment at Baruch for this year, but um, we have seen an increase overall in terms of the numbers who have applied. And yes, they do seek out the programs on their own. I mean, some do hear from their friends, um, but actually what I do is I actually go to all of the orientations for the School of Business, for um, School of Public Affairs. So we actually make our presence so that when the student actually comes to Baruch, they already are aware of the program. Um, and so we have flyers in there about it. And so they actually, even before they maybe even register for classes, they're already reaching out to me or already uh, filling out the application to say, hey, I want to apply. So, you know, it's, it's like I said earlier, it's sometimes word of mouth, um, but it's a lot of just emailing and promoting and just kind of making our presence in different events and activities that they have to go to. So, um, and we might circle back around to this, but I, before I forget, because of, that's my nature at this point, um, the program itself from an organizational standpoint, um, how do you keep it sort of going? And what's the process that you, you check in and you sort of follow the mentor-mentee relationship throughout the school year? Um, how do I keep it going? Mm -hmm. I don't know. No. <laughs> I'm, I, I'll tell you what, every year that it comes around, at the end of the year, you're already, I'm already getting emails to prep me for next year. And then <laughs> during the school year, you usually had the mentor for a morning and mentor for an yeah. evening programs. Mm -hmm. um, and then come I, at the end of August or beginning of September, I'm getting a notice saying, hey, you agreed to the, the year long mentor program. Here's the calendar way it's going to work and I'm always, I can't say I'm surprised, but I, it, it usually is indicative to me of sort of time periods in a year that I'm getting Kimberly's email saying, okay, get ready. Uh, we're about to yeah. start up a new school year. 
Yeah, that's funny you say that because, you know, you're not the only one. So sometimes if I'm like a day late or like a week late, I'll get emails from mentors saying, isn't this the time of year you start, you're supposed to be inviting me and I didn't get anything. So, um, so actually we keep a calendar of events and a timeline. And so, as you said, it's all of our events typically happen around the same time of year. So we're already like, for example, right now planning for next year, um, as crazy as that is, um, in terms of how we keep it going, you know, we, I'm really grateful that I have a great team. So I get a lot of support, not only from our director of alumni relations, but also from my colleagues within that office too. And so they really help me in terms of spreading the word. Um, so a lot of our alumni who get our newsletter, they're already seeing the emails like, hey, sure. sign up or coming up, save the date and things like that. So um, but our calendar is always already prepared and booked a year ahead. So how, so can you explain to folks, I, make, I mentioned mentor for a morning, mentor for an evening. Can you explain to them what those are and then how are they going to be different now that everything is sort of virtual for Baruch at the moment? Yep. Uh, so Mentor for a Morning slash Evening is actually our other signature program, which is the short-term mentoring programs that I was uh, had touched on very in the beginning. Um, and so the short-term mentoring program and the reason why we do both short-term and long-term is really because we know our mentors are very busy and some of them have these crazy schedules. And so we really designed two different programs that meet the needs and meet the schedules of our volunteers. Um, so the short-term mentoring program Pre-COVID um, and all this <laughs> happening, uh, Mentor for a Morning Evening was our speed networking event. And basically what happens is that mentors are in a room, they're at a table, and students are matched with that particular mentor. They have a conversation with them for about 45 minutes or so, and then after 45 minutes, it rotates. Um, so this is a one-day event that happens for about three to four hours or so. Um, Again, with the short-term mentoring programs, I do all the matching as well. Um, for that one, though, the students are required to actually submit their questions ahead, ahead of time. So on the day of the event, the mentor is already, is already aware of what the students is going to ask them. Sure. Um, and so now, though, with COVID and all this has happened, actually, in the spring, we did our very first virtual uh, mentoring week. So similar, but actually, <clears throat> we found that it actually gained a lot of popularity because it had a lot more flexibility. We didn't put a specific time frame on it. And basically, the mentors and mentees had to connect during that particular week right. um, on whatever day, whatever time they wanted to have a hour conversation. Um, mentors are not required to mentor the student afterwards. Um, they're not obligated. Some of them stay in touch. Um, but it's really an opportunity for students who either did not get accepted into our year-long program or, like I said, they can't commit to a year-long uh, mentor, so, but they still want to network and meet professionals. Yep. Um, I so participated in that. and It was actually, it was different. Obviously, you prefer the in-person, but mm -hmm. it, it was good that instead of just sort of cramming everybody in the one morning. I spread it out over three days mm -hmm. uh, during the week. Um, to that end, on those short-term engagements, are those open to all year students or is it still the juniors and the first year graduates? So those are open to all students. Okay. Um, we give priority though to students who are not involved in our year-long program. Okay. Now, do the other CUNY institutions do this? have similar um, programs? Not to my knowledge. Uh, however, I know schools like Queens College, for example, uh, they reached out to me because there are a lot of schools have, who have heard about us and want to start a similar program. So they reached out to me about best practices. Um, Queens College is actually doing something on a smaller scale. Um, they're just amazed at how efficient and how organized mm -hmm. the Baruch program is. And they're like, we can never match into what you do. Yeah. Um, but the word is definitely getting out there about EOC. And so I think a lot of these CUNYs are just saying, well, how can we tap in and do something similar on our campus? So, have, so outside of the CUNY system, uh, let's say the SUNY system or other colleges or universities, have any of them approached you? Because again, I mean, I graduated from a university in Virginia. Uh, my wife graduated from the University of Missouri. I have friends who graduated from large and small across the board. None of them have ever 
uh, heard of or know of a program such as Executive on Campus at their alma maters. Have any, anybody else approached you about this? Mm-hmm. Um, we actually had Pace reach out to us too. They don't um, count. They're in downtown yeah, but, Manhattan. They're still... <laughs> but um, no, we've actually had small colleges and small universities in like Pennsylvania okay. um, on the West Coast also reach out to us. And, you know, some schools have a similar program. Um, like I said, it's, I mean, not to give us credit, but like it's not as organized. Um, you will sometimes find that their program runs kind of like a LinkedIn program, right? Where it's like, sure. you just connect with, uh, it's available where they have mentors who, I mean, alumni who will serve as mentors, but there's nobody in the back end really managing that. So it's kind of like you reach out to them and you have these one-off conversations. Sure. But um, yes, I would say Baruch College Executives on Campus is very unique and not something that any other school has. I'll tell you what, you should franchise it. I mean, that'd be a good way for Baruch to make some extra money and whatnot. It's just to franchise the executive on campus and have you, uh, not to give you, you know, any more responsibility, but have you run it nationally and, and sort of institute it at other, institu- at other universities and colleges. Yeah, that's... Huh. There that's, you go. I just gave you an idea, Kimberly. Yeah. Start building yeah. a building business plan. Exactly. Not like you have anything else to do at the moment. <laughs> this is my world, so yeah. no. <laughs> So um, when it comes to uh, sort of the, the relationship to the mentor and the mentee, do you give directions to the mentee or the mentor on what you would like to see come out of the relationship? Or do you leave that entirely up to the two people sort of communicating throughout the school year? Um, so I think one of the good things about our program is that there's a lot of flexibility. And so, yes, we do, in the sense, give mentors and mentees at least a framework in terms of what are our expectations um, and what are our guidelines. And the beginning of our year-long program, we do a kickoff. Um, and so in the kickoff, we just give them overall, well, these are our resources and these are some tips that you should keep in mind. And I also send out a guidebook. And in that guidebook gives kind of a framework on each month. These are the things that you should typically or kind of be preparing um, or be focusing on. But there's a lot of flexibility. And so, you know, in that guidebook, actually, what I talk about and what I write about is that, you know, as the mentors, you should be helping your mentees focus on re- reaching goals and mm-hmm. fra- and typing up and kind of uh, creating what are those goals? What do they want to achieve out of the program? And so, um, so yeah, there is a lot of flexibility. We're not very specific on what they should be doing. Um, but I act as kind of that middleman and I jump in sometimes when it's, you know, I do hear mentors and mentees sometimes say, well, I don't really know what I want to talk about, or there are so many things I want to focus on in this mentorship relationship and where do I start? And so that's kind of where I come in and offer that guidance. And let's, let's get to, have, have you ever had, are all the relationships good or are they like any human interaction? Some people just don't gel well and then you reassign them? Um, yeah, so, you know, I'm not going to lie. It's like any right relationship, not all are great. Um, so we have had mentorship relationships where it's sometimes just personality differences and you know either the student or the mentor will say hey you know what I don't think this is the right match we're just not getting along and you know I don't automatically right away off the bat say well okay we're going to close it and I try to come in and see what is causing that friction what is causing that differences is this something that we can work out together Um, you know sometimes like I said there's a communication barrier and it's just like I don't know how to approach the situation they have a different style than me and so it's kind of I do a lot of coaching um, on this at the same time so and then sometimes it's just either the student feels overwhelmed or they have a lot they're juggling so then they have to opt out and withdraw um i mean we've never knock on wood but we've never had horror stories and anything like too drastic or too bad yeah um yeah it's just usually personality differences well that's not a bad thing i mean that's yeah. you, you know what <laughs> that prepares the mentee for actually working in the real world to where yep. you're going to have personality differences and you have to figure out how to how to handle it because it's not as easy to walk away from the job as it is sort of yeah. a mentoring program And that's exactly what I tell them. And that's why I do, like I said, I spend a lot of time sometimes coaching the individuals Mm -hmm. just because I, I, 
you know, tell them you have to see this as a learning opportunity too. you know, no one, when you get out into that real world, nobody may help you, you know, and you just have to deal with it. So, um, you know, it's good. I like when students come out and let me know rather than them just letting it go and time passes. And I don't know about it till the end when the program is over. Sure. Well, I mean, that's, that's the way I approach it. Uh, any of the mentoring relationships that I had is I tell them, look, this is your, this is your school year and you're going to tell me what you want to get out of it mm-hmm. and sort of run the schedule, uh, not necessarily around mine, but you're going, you're going to tell me how often you would comfortable to, to talk, to email, what you want to get out of it. Um, I, I tell people I'll do legwork, but you're going to have to tell me what the legwork is that you want me to do. Exactly. Um, and so usually the mentees like that because then mm-hmm. they feel like they have control over it and they can say, okay, well, this month I want to talk about this and this month I want to talk yep. about that, as opposed to me where I might make up something that, that I think they need, but it might not be anywhere close to yep. what they want or what they really mm-hmm. need. Yeah, that was great. So um, we are at almost... 35 minutes. Uh, it goes very fast, uh, yeah. <laughs> these conversations and whatnot. So let's close it out on a high note. Um, let's say things return to normal next year um, and, and you could get back to it. How do you envision sort of migrating the program back to what it was? Or do you think with some of the, the lessons that you've learned and some of the new um, capabilities that technology has offered you that you are you going to have more of a hybrid model uh, going forward um you know it's funny we were just having this conversation with our team and timely yeah (laughs) and you know i think this opportunity um having to switch and go virtual has definitely taught me a few things and you know i think while a lot of us still prefer that being in the room together, connecting with one another, we're still going to do that. But I think that virtual piece, whether it's virtual mentorship is a separate component or possibly doing a hybrid, that's still going to stay. Um, and because one of the benefits that we found um, when I was talking earlier about the virtual mentoring week, and even now with this year long program is that we've been able, because we've gone virtual, we've been able to actually reach out to Baruch college alumni and also even non Baruch graduates from um, outside of the New York city area. So we have mentors okay. from California, from North Carolina who are volunteering. And, you know, I think, this is great because a lot of our students either they don't want to stay here in New York, they're going to move or, you know, you never know. So I think that virtual piece is still going to be there. It's just how we do it and what are we going to design for it? I mean, I think it's, it's fantastic opportunity for the mentors who are no longer in the geographic area to, uh, to actually participate in this. And then the mentees get an opportunity to learn that there is life outside the city and the five boroughs. Because mm-hmm. uh, some of them aren't aware of that. They're, they're not sure what's beyond the Hudson River. So yep. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's always good to, to get that exposure. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm serious. I think it's a fantastic program. I'm, uh, my dad's been doing it now, I think, 11, 12 years. I'm not sure if he's doing it this year. Um, but he, when he introduced me, it was because he was a banker forever and most of the kids who were coming up to him to talk to him wanted to start their own company. He's like, well, I've never done that. So why don't you talk to my son? And, um, you know, a simple conversation got me involved in the program and uh, I brought some other people in who really enjoyed it. So I really do think you got to franchise it. You got to get it out there to the world because I think this could help students in so many ways. Uh, I've seen it myself just personally, not saying that I've done it, but that they've, they gain confidence when they get validation from people who are already out there doing what they want to do or think they want to do. Um, and so I think it's a fantastic opportunity to sort of pay it forward for those of us who, uh, who've who been out of college for so many years. Uh, but that's it for me. Uh, we almost hit the 40 minute mark, which is sort of my goal to keep it within that range. And, <laughs> Thank you for having me. Ah, not a problem. So Kimberly, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I appreciate everybody for tuning in to Did You Know That? I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Kimberly Chu from Baruch College and um, Graham Puba of Executives on Campus, uh, the mentoring program there at Baruch. 
If you found this conversation or previous conversations of interest, please subscribe with the bell so that you get notified when new videos go live, which is every Thursday. Uh, I program it at different times so that you guys don't get used to one particular time that the video goes live. Uh, but join us next week uh, when we'll have another interesting topic. And Kimberly, until I see you again whirling around a, uh, an EOC event, uh, you take care of yourself. You too. Have a good one. All right, thanks.